years ago, I was deputy CEO at the time, and I was invited to a public ceremony to represent my company, who uh, was uh, receiving an award by the Italian government. As I got on stage, I got this very nice plate, which I believe is still hanging on the office wall, and as a gift, I got a tie. <laughs> True. Indeed, they did not expect me to be a woman. And in fact, at that time, I was one of the few women in uh, executive position in my country. 35 years ago, when I started my career, I was always the only woman in the room, except maybe sometimes, you can imagine, the secretary. As time passed by, the number of women increased, and I was one of the few. And then I started working with the groups where there were more women, and finally, I had the joy of leading an entire company organization who was consisting of a 50-50 blend of men and women at all levels. So tonight I'm here to share with you how to get to gender equality in a company, and I believe that this would be an opportunity and a possibility for any company in Switzerland if they wanted to. But maybe you would ask and wonder, why is she so passionate about gender equality? Well, let me tell you, gender equality is first and foremost a matter of human rights, so it is the right thing to do. Moreover, I've been in business since decades now, and I know that it is also a smart thing to do, because there are so many opportunities for companies who embrace gender equality. Women are different, and that is exactly why we need them in the workplace. I believe that today the male paradigm of uh, conquer, uh, uh, control and command needs to be balanced with different qualities like communication, creativity, care, that are not exclusive but very strong in women. In the past, this meant uh, or was interpreted as a weakness, but today in the new world of work, these are exactly the characteristics that are needed for business leaders. Gender equality is very important for companies, and there are many benefits in the field of uh, quality of the professionals, of commerciality, and of reputation, just to name a few areas. And yet, I'm in retail since 20 years now, and I still see companies who base their product design, their service content, or even their communication on static and old stereotypes. Like for instance, you know, we see many cars where you can easily find a space for, your, for a bottle or a can, but you cannot find a space for a handbag. And if you put it on the passenger seat, then you go crazy because the sensors of the seat belt start to beep. Huh? Uh, my point is, if you take into consideration your customer from her perspective, you develop also a very good business. So how did we get to gender equality? Um, let me share with you some of the, uh, of the things that we have done. First of all, start with awareness at the top. Leaders need to realize how important it is and what are the benefits, then need to commit for it, plan, implement, and follow up. In other words, mean it, do it, and measure it, which is the base of any business uh, endeavor. The second is broaden your horizons. How many times did you hear leaders saying, I would like to hire women, but I cannot find them? Have a look at this room. <laughs> um, I can tell you, really, it's not that difficult. What we did, we have um, uh, started doing uh, gender blinds blind CV analysis, and we have uh, um, hired um, uh, gender-balanced hiring teams, and we found many, many uh, good female candidates. 
Third, you need to be attractive to them, even if the sector is believed to be not so suitable or interesting for women. In my case, our sector is quite interesting for women, home furnishing, but there are some areas that were thought not really fit for them, like logistics. And this also revealed to be a myth, because we found out that uh, female forklift drivers are much more accurate than their male <laughs> colleagues. We have less uh, goods damaged, and today, uh, the um, uh, country uh, leader of logistics and fulfillment uh, is a woman. So you need to communicate in a different way and make with your words, with the graphics, with the uh, characteristic that you um, highlight, uh, jobs attractive for, for, for all genders. Third, you need to have clear and easy policies to apply. For instance, what we decided is that every time that we need to promote a person or to, or to hire a person, we need to have a, a, a gender balanced short list of candidates. Last but not least, you need to reward according to market and to performance. And this is the smart way to get to equal pay. What normally happens is that companies apply this mere criteria of, uh, criteria of uh, percentage increase. But this, in fact, broadens the, the gender pay gap because men statistically are, pay, are paid higher than women. So with these um, actions, you manage to get to gender equality, but then you want to have them staying in the company and thrive as well as their male colleagues. And this becomes even more evident uh, when women become mothers, because it has been proven that most of the times employers turn down women for opportunities or hiring or promotions, not because they are women, but because they are mothers. And I believe that companies ne need necessarily to give up this misconception that maternity is an obstacle. What we did uh, is to create the condition to bolster families and support them with uh, um, flexible work hours and uh, part-time jobs at all levels, both for men and women, and also providing two months paternity leave for uh, the men in our company who could, uh, at that point, to take care of their family better and with more energy and time. Um, I can tell you three stories to conclude. And the first story is the story of uh, um, fathers and dual career. I have talked to so many men who really would like to spend more time with their children uh, and then would be happy to, to have flexible work to share the errands at home to support their partner careers to be easier or, or possible even like the one that uh, was struggling in his marriage, actually, because his wife was a doctor and she needed more time to be present at the hospital with her uh, patients. Uh, thanks to his job flexibility, he could uh, make it possible for her to do that. And now we have a dual career and they are even better in their marriage. The second story is about uh, maternity and talent. A uh, young lady, young woman uh, that was working in, in my office decided to get married and life was fantastic. She had a, an, an important uh, role in the organization, but then she got pregnant. And besides the joy on her personal uh, sphere, she felt sad because she told me, I need to give up my career now that the baby will be born. And this was a very important conversation because we agreed that she could keep her leadership position, she could go on part-time, she could even work from remote when necessary. And not only did she perform excellently all her tasks, but she got uh, over time promoted, and did another step, and had a, a second child even. And the third and last story is about long working hours. When I started to work, it was uh, considered to work lo long hours as a sign of commitment. And in order to underline that, the important meetings were even called uh, late in the afternoon and they ended at 8.39 in the evening. And I 
could do anything about it but participating, otherwise my um, career, my progress would, would not happen. So the moment that I uh, got leadership positions and I was the one calling the meetings, I made sure that the length and the time of the meeting were uh, compatible to family life. What do I say that? Because it is not women that need to be fixed or that need to adapt. It is the organization that need to adapt in order to unleash and benefit from the enormous potential of, of, of women in the organization. And men as well, because what is good for women is good for men as well. 50-50 ratio of women in uh, the organization at all levels. A 50-50 executive team, uh, equal pay, policies that allow this to be sustainable. And at the same time, positive business results, increased customer appreciation and increased uh, co-worker satisfaction. All this happened at IKEA Switzerland in 2015 when we were certified at the highest level of the EDGE certification as the first company in the world. And it's still like that today, so it's sustainable. We committed to gender equality and we decided to go all in with it because we are a value-based company and we believe in people. And we made it happen because we had awareness, commitment, and consequent actions. And I believe that this would be possible on another scale in the entire Switzerland. Thank you. <laughs>